Good morning, children. In the previous classes, we have studied about the Mughal administration, Mughal emperors and Mughal administration. As we know that the largest group of people who existed in the Mughal Empire were the peasantry or the peasants. The main occupation of the people in the Mughal Empire was agriculture. So the main source of income also available to the Mughal rulers was the tax on the produce of the peasantry, which means the whatever the taxes they collected, Mughal rulers collected from peasantry. What were the crops produced by the peasants and uh, also uh, measured properly and surveyed properly and they, uh, the rulers collected taxes from the produce of the peasantry. Most places uh, uh, in the Mughal Empire as we know that the taxes were not directly collected from the peasants. Okay. There were some mediators or the middlemen who were the uh, rural elites or elites means the people who are the uh, important personalities in a village or rural areas. That means maybe sometimes they are the head of the uh, village or the headman or the local chieftain or the local rajas etc or the local rulers also. Okay. So the important person in the village uh, collected taxes and paid to the Mughal rulers. But the Mughal rulers or Mughals use the common term for these all mediators, whether they are the headmen of the village or the local chieftain or a uh, landlord in the um, uh, in their areas. So all these people who were the middlemen for a collection of taxes from the peasants and the submitting in the to the Mughal rule was known as Zemindars. Zemindar was a person. The Mughal rulers called these middlemen as the Zemindars. So he was, they were the uh, local headmen or villages or powerful chieftains they, may, they were. Akbar's revenue minister, who was known as Akbar's revenue minister, Todarmal. Todarmal was Akbar's revenue minister. He carried out a careful survey of crop yields, prices and areas cultivated for a 10 year period. That means from 1570 to 1580. In this 10 year, Akbar's revenue minister Thodar Mall, he <coughs> went around the villages and places and surveyed the land also how much of crops are cultivated. He made a careful study of this, how much of crops are cultivated, what are the crops are cultivated etc. So about each crop he studied and surveyed and in this period the, their Mughal Empire, each province was divided into revenue circles with the <coughs> on schedule of revenue rates for individual crops. Any area when we are going to, we can find out there are some particular crops are grown in a different areas. So based on these uh, crops, areas were divided into revenue circles and uh, they collected taxes from these uh, particular crops in the areas. This revenue system also known as uh, Zapt. So this uh, surveying the land and crops, what are the crop yield um, collected or crop in a particular period of time, that is 10 years time. Okay, so this type of revenue system, which was introduced by the uh, Mughals, especially the revenue minister Thodarmal of Akbar, this revenue system was known as Zabd. So it was prevalent in only those regions where direct administration of Mughals taking place. Okay, they could survey the land only wherever the Mughal administrations were taking. Place. Sometimes we can find uh, <coughs> the provinces which are not directly included in the Mughal Empire like the Gujarat and Bengal, it was not uh, done, such kind of survey was not done. So in some areas where the Zemindas or <coughs> this middlemen exercised a great deal of power, that means the Zemindas were bigger, very powerful and they were like the king in their own area. So these people exploited the farmers also. So the exploitation by Mughal administrators also could drive them to rebellion and uh, sometimes we can find the Mughal administrators also or the um, uh, Mughal administrators or Mughal officers also were very uh, corrupted. 
okay such kind of mongol administrators collected more taxes or more demanded more revenues or extra revenues from the um, zemindars and peasants also so sometimes uh, the peasants and the zemindars of the same caste allied in rebelling against the mongol authority so this made this type of corrupt government or administrators of the mughal rule okay or during the mughal rule made the peasants and zemindars to join together to ally together and they began to rebel against the mughal authority so these peasant revolts challenged the stability of the mughal empire from the end of the 17th century we far understand that these zemindars and even peasants also in the rural areas uh, commonly or joined together and revolted Uh, against the Mughal rule or the Mughal authorities. Now, Akbar during the period of Akbar, he was one of the greatest leader uh, rulers of the Mughal Empire. Akbar ordered one of his close friends and courtiers. He was known as Abul Fazl. Akbar ordered him to write a history of his reign, history of his rule during that period. Abul Fazl wrote a three-volume history of Akbar's reign. Title the Akbar Nama. It was the name of the book or title of the book, the Akbar Nama, written by Abul Fazl. He wrote about the rule of the during how was the uh, period of Akbar, how he can uh, ruled the kingdom, etc. So the first volume of this book, there were three volumes. First volume of this book dealt with the Akbar's ancestors, and the second volume ancestors, so who were his uh, uh, parents and great. his grandparents and great grandparents etc so his ancestors about the he had written in the first volume second volume recorded the events of the akbar's reign during the akbar's period akbar's rule what were the events that taken place uh, in the kingdom was written in the second volume third volume is known as the ain e akbari third volume is ain e akbari so it deals with the ad- akbar's administration household army the revenues and geography of his empire what is the topography and geography of his empire and how his administration and household army the revenue collection etc were mentioned in the third volume which was known as ain akbari so it also provides the rich details about the traditions and culture of the people living in india also during that period how the people lived their traditions and culture their society their lifestyles etc were mentioned in this book also the most interesting aspect about the idea about it is uh, it's a rich statistical details about the things and uh, diverse uh, as crops yield prices wages and revenues so very uh, clearly it was mentioned in this book uh, in the third volume of aini akwari about uh, all these uh, <coughs> uh, what were the crops cultivated what is the yield how much of goods are cultivated and uh, what were the prices of the goods uh, how the wages to the laborers were paid and how the revenues were collected or how much revenue was collected all this description is clear Really given in the third volume that is called the Aini Akbari. Now in the next class we will study about Akbar's policies more broadly.